Hey everyone, welcome to Long Story Short the Podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. And we're back after a very brief, brief hiatus. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about nighttime routines and not just the skincare variety. What do we do in the hours between dinner and bedtime? And your answer is, what do I do? You are not alone. Mm -hmm. Before we get to that, a quick reminder that your ratings and reviews are always welcomed and deeply appreciated. It is the very best way you can support our show, and it is completely free to do that. And the easiest way is by going to meganandwendy.com slash Apple Podcast. It'll take you right to the place you need to be. You can also join the conversation in our Facebook group, Long Story Shorties, and you can find us on Instagram at Megan and Wendy LSS. Uh, yeah, today's podcast is also a video podcast available exclusively on Patreon. So hello, Patreon. Um, starting at just $3 a month, you can get access to content we only create for our Patreon subscribers, including this video podcast, deleted scenes, bonus podcast episodes, and more. Plus, Sign up and you will get access to the archives. That's a couple of months worth of uh, content that we've created thus far. So sign up at Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Megan and Wendy. All right. Um, we also have a few emails to read, but before we jump into those, we want to remind you that you can always email the show at meganandwindy at gmail.com. And if you are a listener of our bonus Girls Gone Hallmark episodes, um, you missed... Well, if you're not a listener, let me say that. If you're not a listener of our Girls Gone Hall- Hallmark, you missed an epic vent session where we talked about um, manners when you're like sliding into DMs and emails. And um, I, Megan had to bleep me several times in this episode because I just went off. So it was actually a pretty funny episode. I enjoyed it. Um, I will drop a link to that episode in the show notes. But if you are already subscribed to this podcast, that episode should be in your feed, so we would love it if you gave it a listen. A uh, quick little programming note before I jump into a couple of emails. Um, there is some construction happening in my backyard, and it, there's the occasional chainsaw, and so uh, I'm going to do my best to edit it out, but if you can hear it, that's what's going on, folks. Yeah, I'm sure people didn't think there was like a mass murderer in your backyard with a chainsaw. <laughs> I will tell you that at one point my husband looked into doing this work himself and he's like, we can just rent a chainsaw. And I was like, I don't, I don't think that's a thing people do. Turns out you can easily rent a chainsaw. I was terrified. I was like, you're going to lose a foot. Anyway. <laughs> oh my God. Did we not talk about not DIY in your backyard? <sighs> yeah. 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 So um, we have professionals with their chainsaws and a tractor. Is that what it is? A tractor? A, what's a bobcat? A bobcat is a... Is it digging dirt? Well, yeah, they're tearing out landscaping. Oh, okay. There's a mini bobcat. It's not a tractor. A- okay. Anyway. Whatever. Let's jump into a couple emails. <laughs> okay. Um, we, the first one is from Lori, who has heard us talk quite a bit about our hand woes and how we are like always working on like trying to keep them look nice looking Mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. And so she sent us a recommendation for the Milani Dewy Hand Cream. It is a peach scent and a coral color tube. She says, my hands are always dry and this is soothing. Would make a nice little gift. Guys, we love that kind of recommendation. Thank you. Milani, the makeup brand? Yes, right? I had no idea. They had like body products. Is it Lori, you're going to have to write back in. Is it in the uh, on the aisle where all the makeup is, or is it in the lotion aisle or hand cream aisle? I need to know. That's a good question. Um, another email follow-up comes from Lisa, and this is in response to our favorite trips podcast, which is several episodes ago, and we will leave a link to that in our show notes. You can always... All of our episodes are archived in the podcast app that you're listening to, so they're easy to find. And this says, she responds to two things. First, she says, Wendy had an annoying dinner companion while eating out at Easter. Don't feel bad for being annoyed. You paid for a nice dinner experience. They should have had earbuds. And I'm happy to hear this backing up of our feeling. Like, it's fine to bring your device to the restaurant. Just like, 
pop in a headphone, guys. I know, but I don't want to be like that asshole that's like, excuse me, can you turn that down? Like, I would just, I'm not that person. You're going to suffer in silence. I'm going to suffer in silence. I would not even, if my entree was wrong, I don't send it back because I just, I just deal. (laughs) I just deal with it. Me either. We, I mean, we just recently went to breakfast and my egg was wrong and I just ate it. <laughs> so that's true. Um, the email goes on to say, and you two seem like you've enjoyed some nice vacations. That's great that you're making great memories. I have a hard time paying for vacations. I'm cheap, but you can't take the money with you and the memories can last your whole life. Well, I want to say that even on nice vacations, they are sometimes not great. So you know, <laughs> they don't, you, you don't have great memories, you know? So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And believe me, we have done plenty of, um, I will say no frills vacations in, in the time that we've been married and even growing up. Like we, my family did not have a lot of money growing up and we did a lot of road trips and stayed at, you know, best westerns and motel sixes. But you are right that it is the experience and the memories that you create. And I will say again that even the nicest vacations can have the worst memories. So, yeah. And growing up, we were not a family that took big vacations either. My parents travel a lot now, but growing up, our vacation was to San Diego. We rented an RV for a week. So, mm-hmm. um, and we live in Orange County. So it was an hour and a half, which was a, like, <laughs> I have such great memories of being there. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying we were not world travelers as children. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me. Well, you know, it's funny because even somebody was just talking about, oh, they went to Yosemite during uh, spring break. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I've grown up in California. Never been to Yosemite. Like me either. We just never did those trips when we were younger and we haven't done them now. So um, we talk about it all the time. It's always like when we talk about taking a trip and then just never. I'd love to go, though. I know what I would like love to do. (sighs) This is such a fantasy, but I think it would be terrible in its execution is like get a really nice RV and like just travel across America because there's so many places here in the United States that I've never seen. Um, but I could just, I don't want to put the work into like an RV situation, <laughs> you know, there's like the bathroom stuff you got to do and whatever. We were talking to friends this weekend about camping and RVing and she was saying like neither she nor her husband are particularly handy like they're not DIY people and she's like I kind of feel like one of you needs to have that skill if you're going to put a lot of time into camping or RVing because there's a lot of troubleshooting and if you're not good at that it can just be a big headache and in my relationship neither of us is particularly great at that and so I feel like those little things that come up that some people can just handle would just be like a nightmare for us. Yeah. So basically, you need to travel with your own Schneider. And I if need you, Danae's <laughs> handyman. If you don't know what we're talking about, you got to listen to every episode. <laughs> um. So, Wendy, we're going to talk lasagna for a minute. <laughs> because Wendy is taking part in this project that I had never heard of until she shared it. And... uh Tell me a little bit about your lasagna project. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago in like one of my like Bravo-centric Facebook groups, somebody had mentioned an organization called Lasagna Love. And I was like, oh, what's that? Let me check it out. Um, It's like a grassroots, and I'm pulling up my notes here. So if you're watching the video, you'll see I'm reading notes. I just don't want to mess it up. Um, It's a nationwide grassroots movement to connect neighbors with other neighbors through homemade meal delivery. Their their mission is to eliminate stigmas associated for asking, I'm sorry, associated with asking for help. So... This woman started Lasagna Love at the beginning of the 2020 pandemic. So it's fairly new, but it's like a nationwide movement now. You basically sign up and um, they have this whole like online portal. You sign up, you you tell your availability if you want to make a lasagna once a week, once a month, once a quarter, whatever. Um, so I signed up a couple weeks ago and I got a match. I was very excited. And um, so I made a really nice, big, hearty lasagna for a family that lives in an adjacent city. And I took it over there last Friday and it was awesome. I saw this picture of this lasagna and it looks fabulous. Like it was like a giant pan. And I was just thinking when you had your daughter, did people bring you food? 
Yeah, but we didn't know a ton of people, you know, like a couple neighbors right. dropped stuff off. Um, when I was going through cancer treatment, uh, a lot of people brought food over and that was so helpful. So, so helpful. But I think with Lasagna Love, the mission is to like really help families who are, um, dealing with food insecurities and, you know, just being overwhelmed in the pandemic or being sick or losing their job or, or whatever. That's what it was born out of. Right. Um, well, the yeah. reason I asked is because when it didn't really happen with my first, but by the time I had my second, like we were kind of like in the mom groups and so everyone, yeah. you know, does. And I just remember feeling so cared for when someone, mm-hmm. I, someone at one point made us a pasta dinner and I was just like, it felt like such a loving thing to have this homemade meal delivered to your house. Yeah. So I think that's such a nice, yeah, I don't know. It's a nice, loving thing to do. Here's my thing. Like, Lasagna is not the easiest thing to make. There's a lot of steps to it. (laughs) And, um, but when I was making it that day, it wasn't a chore. It was like, I'm making this for somebody who really needs it. And you're only required to make a lasagna for them. But I added like some breadsticks and some cookies and like some fruit, you know, because I figured like they, maybe they really need it. So I don't know exactly what their situation was. You don't share those kind of details. Right. Um, but I ask you, you're supposed to ask permission, like, hey, can I add a couple of extras? Are you guys OK with that? And this family said yes. And so I uh, made my made my teenage daughter help me. She didn't she wasn't home when I made the lasagna because she, she, she was at school, but she went with me and we dropped it off. And I thought it was like so important for her to like be involved and see me doing something like this for somebody else for so many reasons. But I think it's a great organization. We're going to leave easy. a link to that. You know, I've and never easy. made a lasagna. Well, I know. So I asked in our Facebook shorties group about for la- lasagna recipes, because I just made like a regular old meat and cheese lasagna. But, you know, a lot of people like like a vegetarian or a white lasagna or whatever. And Megan says, I've never made a lasagna. I can't believe it. So... There's the the biggest reason for that is because I can't eat lasagna. Yes, I know you can make a dairy free okay. lasagna, but there's so many different like cheesy products in it that it's just too much dairy. I don't know. Like some dairy free things are fine. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you get something super cheesy, it's it's a challenge. Sure. So I we buy a Costco lasagna and it's delicious and it's easy. And for me, lasagna is one of those like because we only buy the Costco lasagnas. It's like a hearty but so easy thing to make for dinner that to turn it into something I made from scratch would kind of ruin the experience. No. <laughs> um, but my family, I mean, the Costco lasagna is great. I would like sure. to try and make it myself, but it's a lot of work for something I can't eat myself. So. I know. That's a drag. I, well, it was so funny. My husband came in the kitchen that day. And I go, guess what we're having for dinner, too? Because I just like double batched it. Totally. <laughs> It was one of my best lasagnas, and I'm telling you because it was made with love. That's right. Okay. We're going to um, take a sharp left turn here. Yeah. <laughs> and we are going to talk about the fan favorite Nerds Gummy Clusters, because Wendy had her first experience with them last week. I finally found them. You know, I know you said that they're very hard to find. So every every store trip I make, like to Target, to the grocery store, I like keep my eye out for them. I finally found them at Walgreens this weekend while I was there for something else. And I got to tell you, they're pretty dang good. Like, you can just pop them into your mouth, you know. But I, if you guys are a Patreon subscriber, you know know that we ate, like, a nerd's rope. And I, like, made a joke that I, like, eat it like corn on the cob. I still do that with these little nuggets, too. Like, I eat the nerds off of it and then eat it. That's so funny. I put them on my mouth, let the nerds dissolve, and then I chew the gummy. That's that's my nerds gummy cluster process. Locally, the only place I can consistently find them is Walgreens. If you have a Walgreens near you, they carry two different size bags. I actually saw them in a pavilions this weekend, which is not a grocery store I typically go to, in the checkout. And they were in a bag like I've never seen, like a Skittles kind of bag. Oh, interesting. I've never seen them like that. I did buy two bags like that. Um, they are hard to find, though. So you can also order them online. I found them in a resealable kind of like bag. Mm-hmm. And then I found them in those big movie box. Yeah. Um, movie box size. Yeah. 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 All right. We're going to take a quick back. Nope. 
That's not what we're doing. We're going to take a quick break and come right back to talk about evening routines. This podcast, nope, today's podcast is brought to you by Celestial Shell, run by Michelle, a maker in Orange County who hand makes every single one of her products. And if you're watching this on video right now, you can see Wending holding up one of her products, which are fabric bins. They're so great. She has this cute Zodiac print. I bought several during the holidays in a holiday print. You can toss, she has her empties in them. They're great for like your Nespresso pods or your K cups or honestly anything you put a bin in. How many bins do you have in your house? She's got tons of handmade products like zippered pouches and book sleeves. And again, they're all handmade with love by Michelle. The code LSS Friends 15 at checkout will get you a discount at celestialshell.com. Of course, that will all be in our show notes. All right, friends, welcome back. And today's podcast topic was um, prompted by an email, and this person would like to remain anonymous, but I am going to read the email, which says, what do you do after dinner and before bed? This is my loneliest time of day as everyone in my house runs off to do their own things. Electronics, usually, I have two teens. And I thought that was such an interesting question, because sometimes I'm like, what do I do during that time? I'm opening mm-hmm. our Facebook group right now if you're watching the video because we have some responses in there that I'd like to share. So what I, Wendy and I were talking about last week when, when this email came in is how different our answer to this question is now than maybe it would have been five, eight years ago when we had little kids. Mm-hmm. Like my, when my kids were little, it was like, Okay, dinner. I, I, my routine was like dinner, get them in the bath, put them to bed. Like, <laughs> let's get through this. Mm-hmm. And because then, like, my life could kind of begin after they went to bed and I would get real crabby if anything kind of interrupted that routine. Now, I'm not giving anyone a bath. <laughs> well, I, uh, I say the same thing. Like, I remember when my daughter was little. I think her bedtime was about 7.30 and I would live for those hours after she went to bed. Like it was the only time that it was quiet for me because my husband goes to bed early too. So like I was alone, alone and it was fantastic. But that's when I like watched the trash TV I wanted to watch or eat the snacks I wanted to eat without judgment. Or um that was when I was blogging a lot too. So I would spend all those hours doing that. But it was fantastic. But now it's like everybody just like our email writer. Like I, everybody goes their own separate ways and does their own thing. And it is kind of lonely. I will agree. So we asked this question in our Facebook group and the answers were super varied, which I think is probably typical, right? Like people have different nighttime Mm -hmm. routines. So we have some people who are super organized. This is the person I would like to be the person who says I lay out clothes for the next day, set the coffee maker, pack lunch, clean the kitchen, wash face and brush teeth. Well, that's that's who I want to be. I'm not that person. I'm so unproductive (laughs) during the nighttime. When I'm not needed or obligated to be productive. I'm like sofa city sweetheart, like for two and a half hours. Another person says, depends on my mood. Ideally, have a clean kitchen with no dishes in the sink because it stresses me out to walk into a dirty kitchen in the morning. Relatable. Mm -hmm. Then I usually watch TV, scroll Instagram, or work on cleaning up the mess from the day in my sewing area. Some nights I read. Question. Wendy, do you go to bed with dishes in your sink? No, we clean up dinner right after we eat. I can't stand to wake up to dishes in the sink. So as much as I would love to just like walk away or like leave them quote soaking, which we know is a a lie. Like they're not soaking. We're just leaving them as much as I would love to do that. I know how much I'm going to hate it in the morning. So yeah, we, the dishes are done. The dishes are done, man. The dishes are Um, done, man. I, uh, thankfully for my husband, I don't think he likes to wake up to dirty dishes either. So if there is something soaking, uh, he usually like, takes care of it like first thing in the morning because I think it stresses him out so that I wake up to no dishes. 
Yeah, nice. that's nice. And I usually make dinner. My husband usually, usually does the dishes. Same. Sometimes it's a tag team effort. Like I'll, mm-hmm. you know, I'll help like load the dishwasher or whatever. But um, so it's not all on me. Another person says work and laundry. Sometimes an evening walk listening to an audio book. I play a game if my son is up for it. He's a teenager, so it's rare. Um, I'm divorced. My daughter. So- oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say my daughter would love that, but I just don't. Oh, really? Okay. So hold on. Let me finish this and I want to come back to that. I'm divorced, okay. so no hubby to talk to and the teen is usually on Xbox. My quarantine purchase was a fire pit with plans of evening fires while sipping bourbon. Hasn't happened yet. Oh. Um, I have these big dreams of like what our summer evenings are going to look like. I don't know why they couldn't start now, but um, I do like the idea of like sitting outside by the fire and and enjoying the time. It gets boring, I think, (laughs) to be honest. Yeah, right? Like, (laughs) especially when you're not having people over. Okay. Yeah. This is one of the responses I loved. This is a great question and leaves me asking myself, what do I do between dinner and bedtime? I mean, I know I do a lot, mainly finishing, doing stuff around the house, cleaning the kitchen, getting stuff ready for the next day. But it's also fair to say that I putz around on my phone a lot, waiting until it's officially too late to warrant taking a shower and getting into bed to read or watch a show. (laughs) So, well, yeah, that damn social media. Right. Okay. So time suck. Let's go back to family time. Because okay. uh, one person said, it seems like we should be spending time together as a family during that time. So mm-hmm. Wendy and I both have teenagers. My kids are 10 and 13. Your daughter's 13. So pre-pandemic, weeknights were, we like t- we watched TV, but my kids were not on devices. Like they didn't talk to their friends. They didn't play games. Like that was off limits. Now that's their only social interaction for the last year. Obviously that's starting to change a little bit. So we have like slowly allowed more and more because <laughs> it was their only way to talk to their friends. We have two nights a week where it's like no video game mm-hmm. chatting nights. Mm-hmm. And we mm-hmm. do, we play board games or we um, watch, we have some shows that we're watching together, but it, I will say it does feel a little bit forced. Mm-hmm. I, we, en- I enjoy it. The kids kind of enjoy it. <laughs> So that's what I was going to mention earlier is that I think my daughter would love that kind of like, let's play a board game. But honestly, there's two problems. One, I hate playing board games other than Yahtzee. Yahtzee is like the only game I love to play. I like cards too, but okay. So on, going on. Um, I think she, I think she would like it, but it might feel forced to like, okay, everybody, let's get, we're having game night. I just can't. Maybe we're just like so too far into like our routine of like her going upstairs and my husband going to bed and me watching TV. So I I don't know. I mean, I kind of would like to break that, but family time does seem a little bit forced, especially at this age. Yeah. So I agree that it, it sometimes does feel forced. And for me, when I think about it, the question is like, Is it worth still doing because it feels forced or would I rather let it go? And my feeling is like for us, it is still worth it because when we get into it, we do have a good time. And my suggestion to you would be there's so many fun dice games. Like it doesn't have to be like a board game. I have Mm -hmm. lots of dice game suggestions to like that you might like if you like Yahtzee. Okay. Uh, um, Like Quicks. You guys would like Quicks. Um, And Farkle. We we play a lot of dice games in this house. Anyway, I, I'm making faces like I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> They're fun. Um, but I will say that it is my husband who is much better about making those things happen. I'm definitely the more lazy parent. I am the like the parent who gets things done that needs to get done, right? Like all their permission slips are signed. They're always signed up for things. I know when they need to be where. I'm not the social director of our house. Mostly because I am not super social. Like I could like just go be alone. (laughs) Okay. I have a, I have a question though. Are we talking like on a weeknight you guys are doing this two nights a week? Yeah. See, I would have a really hard time. I think getting my husband to rally to do that. Um, just because he's tired. He works all day. I get it. He gets up like at 5 a.m. or something crazy. And then, um, I'm tired too. Like I, I'm very productive during the day. So like 
that just seems like a lot to like make happen. I don't know. Too, I am, and sometimes the and the idea of additional interaction at that point, especially given the last year, because I've already been home and I've been managing school, and you know, I kind of feel like I need to step back. Um, but you know, my husband's been at work all day, and I know he's tired too. I just think he has this image of like what he wants the kids to remember, and he enforces it. Whereas I would way too easily give in to like "Mm, we don't want (laughs) to and i'll be like okay we're not gonna do that um but you know it's not hours and hours of games it's like 30 minutes 45 minutes Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like eating dinner together right like it's kind of a a muscle you need to work out because we I know you're shaking your head. Early <laughs> in the pandemic, like we were an eat at the table family. We were not an eat in front of the TV family. And that changed. Like last March, it was like such a treat. I'm like, well, we're home. Like, let's make it fun. And so like we were just eating dinner and it's gotten more and more like we'll eat dinner with TV. And so we almost like lost the muscle of like sitting down and like, what do we do when we sit at the table together? All four of us, <laughs> like mm-hmm. what do we even talk about? So I do think it's like, you kind of have to retrain. And for us, like my kids know, like Monday nights, it's not a video game night. You're not going to be talking to your friends. You're going to be hanging out with us. And fortunately, right now, American Idol's on. So they are like, oh, they know they're going to get to like watch TV with us instead of necessarily, not necessarily having to play a game. <laughs> Got it. I would love if listeners told us if how many nights a week they eat dinner at the table as a family. Because I can tell you us right now is this many times. <laughs> Now, if you're not at the table, are you together or is everyone like going to their own space to eat something? Uh, it's usually my husband and I are in front of the TV and my daughter will pull out her laptop and watch something on her laptop and eat dinner. Yeah. We don't ever eat together. Never. And um, it's not that we haven't tried. We have tried. We always say we should do this once a week. And then it never happens just because our schedule is so inconsistent. Like every week they're very after school sports heavy in the evening mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. sometimes like we don't get home till 7 30 and it's not happening then and so it just doesn't happen it has been easier for us because my kids aren't really back in activities that are affecting our evenings yet but when we were like when we had skating and when we had you know all the other things that were going on it it is harder um And so I know, especially with, like, my son going into high school next year and, like, as our schedules ramp back up, it does get harder when we're busier because we're just not all home at the same time. It's like, eat when you're here. Mm -hmm. Um, But we're all home now. So I don't know. I just, I love the idea and the image of eating together. I just, it's not enjoyable for me (laughs) only because it's like i am hurry up and making this dinner let's sit down hurry up and let's eat like it's just not pleasant so i would really really like to hear from other people if they eat dinner as a family or if they don't yeah definitely what time on a normal night i know you have sports but what time is dinner usually in your house i shoot for 6 30 okay Uh, that because Because my husband usually, well, okay, when he was not working from home, he would get home between 6 and 6.30. Mm -hmm. Now that he works from home, he kind of logs off a little after 5, and then that gives us time to, like, walk the dogs or do what we need to, you know, Mm -hmm. early evening stuff. So I shoot for 6.30. Um, But like I said previously, sometimes it's as late as 7.30. What about you? Um, you know, for a long time, it was 530. And I am just kind of starting to realize that we're now my husband leaves for work early. He leaves by 630. Most days, he doesn't typically eat lunch at school. So like waiting till 630 or seven, he would be starving. Um, and when the kids were little, like we needed to eat earlier. And I still kind of like got stuck in that like, oh, we've got little kids, we eat at 530. It's honestly, six is pretty much the average. Um Cause then any later, I did read that you're supposed to, there's supposed to be a three hour gap between when you eat dinner and when you go to bed, which. Yeah. I always feel terrible. I feel terrible serving dinner later than 
7.15. Like, it feels so late because especially my husband goes to bed like at 8.15. So, like, here he eats dinner and then goes to bed. Like, that's not good for you. Question relating to dinner. Do Mm -hmm. you eat dessert every night? No. I mean, I might have, like, a piece of candy or some nerd gummy clusters <laughs> um, or something small, a cookie or something like that. But I'm not ha- sitting down to a s- slice of cake. No, no. Right. Do you? Like a dessert dessert. No, Do your des- no, no, Your no, daughter no. have like a dessert every night? Uh, yeah. I think she's in the mindset of like dessert is the fourth meal of the day and right. <laughs> she comes down and, but it, again, it's not like a, de- it's like a pudding or like a popsicle. It's mm-hmm, nothing mm-hmm, ever mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, my kids don't eat dessert every night. Um, in the summer, we do tons of popsicles, but I don't, like you said, I don't, I'm not making myself a dessert. It's nothing you would order in a restaurant. Am I eating <laughs> something sweet between dinner and bedtime? Almost always. But sometimes it's like standing in front of the, you know, pantry and eating Oreos before I go upstairs <laughs> or like the candy that I keep in my nightstand, but rarely is it presentable. Fancy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what time do you go to bed? Uh, My bedtime is usually no later than 10. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's later than 10, I'm falling asleep on the couch. Um, And I remember the days I would stay up to, like, 1130 midnight. Mm -hmm. Like, that's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's because I'm 100 (laughs) years old now. But, uh, yeah, last night I think I got into bed at... 8.45. I mean, I watched the iPad for like an hour in bed, but still like... Do you guys have a a TV in your room? Like a... No. No TV. No TV in our room. My husband hates it. So does he does not... Like he would not get in bed and watch the iPad? No. Uh, he he doesn't watch the iPad. He may read the iPad or read a okay. book. Yeah. But okay. never, never falls asleep to a TV on. No. No. Okay. So this will blow your mind about the 10 p.m. thing. When I was in college... Um, I was in an organization and our meetings for years were 10 p.m. on either Wednesday or Thursday nights. Like, Why so late? Because, because of work schedules or? That was like with everyone's school yeah. class schedules and everything else. That was the only time. 10 p.m. And every year we were like, we're going to change it. We're not doing this 10 p.m. business. And every year it was the only time that worked. And it was fine. Like in college, like I wasn't going to bed before midnight ever. So it didn't seem like a big deal. Like I could be productive at 10 PM, but my first year out of college, I volunteered with them as well. And there were three of us that had graduated and we were like 10 PM, like we got to go to work. In the morning. <laughs> so it would like flipped almost immediately. The idea of a 10 PM meeting. No. Yeah. Um, it's late, man. <laughs> so after dinner, what do you do? Uh, my after dinner routine is basically two and a half hours on the couch. It's in front of the TV and I'm almost embarrassed admitting it, but that's just what it is. I don't think you're alone in that. I don't think you should be embarrassed. So that's basically my routine too. Um, assuming we're not doing like games with the kids. So right now Mm -hmm. my kids, we have dinner, everyone showers, maybe we like walk the dog. Um, and then on a night where the kids are going to like hang with their friends virtually, Mm -hmm. I'll like, you know, the dishes will be done, maybe straighten up downstairs in a perfect world. Like I'll prep for the night before I like, I really like to sit down and make a to-do list for the next day. It kind of like lightens my load a little bit, but here's what we do. We don't even watch TV downstairs. Like we get in bed at like 7.30 while our kids are still up and watch TV in bed. Wait, are your children hygiene. watching bed with you in your bed? No, or? if we're going to watch like a family show, we'll watch downstairs. Oh, okay, okay. So if, if they're, they're just like, like in their rooms. Ready. Yeah, if they're in their rooms talking to their friends, we I, are in bed watching TV. We almost never, my husband and I, watch TV downstairs, just the two of us. Except during the holidays when our Christmas tree is up because... He likes to, like, have the ambiance of the tree. Sure. So, okay. <laughs> so does um, does he fall asleep and do you stay up later watching TV? Or do you guys, like, like turn off the TV and go to sleep together? How does that work? So I'm a bad sleeper in that I cannot get in bed and go to sleep. The idea of walking into a room, laying down, getting in bed and closing my eyes terrifies me. I need... 
something to wind down while I'm in bed. And that means either watching TV or reading. And mm-hmm. I know they say like, it's bad sleep hygiene to watch a screen before bed. I don't, I can easily fall asleep watching TV. Like I do find it soothing certain types of shows, obviously. Um, I would say we go to sleep around the same time, close to 10. I don't like to be the last person awake. So I would say it's a 50, 50 split. Sometimes he will turn off the TV and go to sleep and I'll continue to read or watch something on my iPad. But this is, this is the worst part. When we get in bed at night and watch TV, we're not even watching the same thing. Like in bed together, he's watching the TV on the wall and I'm watching something on my iPad or reading. Oh, interesting. And that, because we don't like a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that bums me out a little bit. Um, Last night, he watches a lot of movies, and he's like, I'm watching a Megan movie. <laughs> like, went upstairs to see what it was. And he was watching Three Men and a Baby. <laughs> so I did watch with him. He's like, I've never seen this movie. <laughs> it is a funny movie, but it is also like 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, it's funny because I watched it as a child and remembered loving it. And uh-huh. we were watching it last night and it's like all sex and drugs. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't remember this at all. And he's like, okay, grandma. <laughs> I was like, but I watched this movie many times. And the only part in my memory I have is like the cute baby scenes. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned sleep hygiene. Let's talk about that. Okay. So y'all, there's a list from the CDC. I want to see if we or you are doing any of these five tips for better sleep from the CDC. One, be consistent, go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time each morning, including the weekends. Are you doing this? No, I go to bed at the same time, mostly every night, but um, no, I don't get up at the same time every morning. No, 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 no. And you sleep in on the weekends? I'm as much as I can. And we're talking like 7, 15, 7, 30. It's not like till 11 wow that'd be heaven God, but no remember those days yes, yes. i remember I can't like sleep in. go ahead i can't sleep past 7 30 oh really no i could i could i just remember like oh the days where you would like sleep in and then i would roll over and turn the tv on and watch lifetime movies like till one and then oh god i miss it <laughs> make sure your bedroom is quiet dark relaxing and at a comfortable temperature yes Yes, yes, yes. Always you? Yes. Once, yes. Dark. Once what? Once, like, the TV's off. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, like, it's dark. It's quiet. The shutters are closed. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We like it. And I will say, during the summer, I like it cool. So we run that AC at night during the summer because I do not like a hot sleep not happening. We, uh, anybody who knows me knows my husband hates air conditioning hates it so that's like a all summer long it's 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 a battle because he is always cold and i am premenopausal and i'm always hot <laughs> but it's easy for the cold person to get warm this and not is what i tell him <laughs> it's not easy like, for the hot like person to get cool throwing covers off of myself i'm like i can't i can't get any cooler here <laughs> unless i yeah. sleep in naked. the bathtub with cold water on. Oh, I'm all naked. <laughs> Basically, though, he's like, take your clothes off. I'm like, actually, that's not... I don't like... You know, I don't like skin touching skin. It makes me hotter. Anyway. <laughs> this is where I fail. Remove electronics such as TVs, computers, and smartphones from the bedroom. Fail. Oh, no. No. I use my... Well, I just listened to this really funny podcast that was like, if you're using your phone as an alarm and that's your excuse, buy an alarm because they're cheap. Oh. <laughs> So, yes, I use my phone as an alarm, but also someone in our home snores. So I use, I well, I (laughs) snore as well, but I just had this huge, not even a huge argument, but a discussion with my husband who believes he does not snore, but he does. And the way I manage that. Uh, is I fall asleep listening to a podcast. So I have earbuds in at night when I fall asleep. So yeah, the p- the phone is under the pillow or like right next really? to the bed. Yeah. Yeah. But you have notifications turned off. Um, yeah. 
Like, like I, if I'm yeah. texting you after you're asleep, it's not like buzzing under your head. Sometimes it husband will be like, turn your notifications off because it's like, bzz, oh, bzz, no, bzz. I didn't know <laughs> on a mattress. that. Yeah. You Don't need to it. have like the do not disturb set to automatically go on. Maybe. But then what if there's an emergency? That's the only phone I have. And somebody calls at night, you know? Yes. OK. Um, life hack. I you can set it to allow any phone calls to come through. So mindset, like any, like if this is an emergency, I'm not going to get a text message. It's going to be a phone call, Mm -hmm. but nobody calls me at like, you know, I'm not, the average stuff is like, I'm getting text messages that I want blocked. If the phone rings at 11 PM, I want to hear it. So my do not disturb is set to accept all phone calls. All right. I'll check into that. (laughs) Avoid large meals, caffeine and alcohol before bedtime. I would say yes, except for those nights that we eat late. But like, yeah, I don't typically drink caffeine at night, not even like an iced tea or anything. It's usually just water, large meals. What was the other thing? Alcohol? Caffeine and alcohol. I mean, occasionally, but not not every night. Yeah, I don't. I'm pretty good about this, too. Um, We eat closer to six, although I do sometimes eat like a lot of candy. And then I wake up with a sore throat from acid reflux. (laughs) See, I would wake up in a night sweat because sugar makes me like have a hot flash. So, (laughs) yeah, I wake up in a night sweat every single night. So, oh, my God, every night. So fun. The last is get some exercise. Being physically active during the day can help you fall asleep at night. Fail. Uh, Maybe walking the dog. God, guys, I need to change up my exercise routine because I don't know. (laughs) I need I I need some help in this regard too, but I do when I have gotten some physical activity, I definitely fall asleep better, stay asleep better. When do you get ready for bed? Like, is it when you're going upstairs to get in bed, or is it earlier than that? Well, if you are new to the show, you know that, or you don't know, I'm terrible about like taking my makeup off at night like it sit probably six nights a week I go to bed with makeup on it's awful guys I know um I wish I could carve out like maybe 10 minutes 30 minutes during that two and a half hour time span that I'm on the couch to like go upstairs and wash my face but I just don't and this is why because after we eat dinner then my husband and I usually watch something on tv together and then he usually goes to bed And so what happens is I don't want to disrupt him while he's trying to go to sleep. I'm in the bathroom, like, making a mess and washing my face and being loud. Now, I already know what you're going to say. Take your stuff downstairs, Wendy. I was just going to say that. (laughs) (laughs) And I could, but I'm lazy, guys. Hi, my name is Wendy, and I'm lazy. The other thing you could do is, like, in the moment, in between, like, sitting down to watch TVs, you could do that first. Yeah, but then, like, he's like, are you ever coming back down? We're watching. <laughs> like, I want to watch a show, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Hi, honey. I love you, and I love the time we spent together. She doesn't <laughs> to the podcast. <laughs> I saw someone mention that they do their skincare in bed, like they wash their face, but then they like take their skincare and they're just like sitting in bed. I, that wouldn't work for me, but um, I could see like the advantage of like you're sitting on the couch and you're like doing each step because you have to wait in between. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I, I say all this and I'm really bad about this too, because my problem is if I don't do it early enough, I will stay up and stay up because I will not go to bed without washing my face. I will not. But I will like scroll my phone until my eyeballs fall out of my head to avoid going into the bathroom and washing my face and getting ready for bed. So if I don't do it early enough, then I like miss my window of motivation and I don't want to do it anymore, but I won't go to bed. That's my biggest problem. That sounds like a terrible cycle. (laughs) It is. And I try and do it early like i try and do it before we sit down to watch tv because then i'm in my pajamas my face is washed and at any point if i'm like oh i'm tired i can just go to sleep Uh uh-huh but if i don't do that then i just sit there thinking like i should go wash my face i should go wash my face i should and sometimes i'm like i don't want to be like fully ready for bed at 7 30 but why why don't i want to be fully ready for bed at seven? like what am i gonna do who's gonna see me doing yeah habits are hard to break Uh, they are hard to break i kind of now i'm thinking should I go buy a cute little caddy and then put my makeup or put my, you know, nighttime stuff in that caddy and then just bring it downstairs with me? 
What it had it how many days do you need? Twenty one days to make a habit? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Spoiler alert. <laughs> she's not gonna try it. <laughs> Gosh, she's so mean. She's so mean. I just know that it's not going to work for you. You're like, I'm going to wash my face every day. And you did it once. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I like wash my face literally like maybe four times a month at night. Like, God, how terrible is that? If my if I didn't break out horribly with because I didn't wash my face, then I would be late. I wouldn't do it. I well, just wouldn't. Let me tell you, lately I've been having like uh, my eyelid is breaking. Like, you know, when you get those little white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're almost like pimples, like on your eyelids. It's because I'm going to bed with mascara on, guys. I know this. And it's been like chronic, like it keeps coming back and coming back. I was like, Wendy, take your freaking makeup off at night and you wouldn't be dealing with these stupid things all day long every day. Right? I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I am lazy and gross, guys. Enemy many of the time, much of the time. So. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break, guys. We would love to hear your nighttime routines. Are you eating with your families? Do you watch TV before bed? Do you have good sleep hygiene? What do you do in the hours between dinner and bedtime? Let us us know. Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. And we'll be right back with Megan and Wendy approved. All right, we're back with Megan and Wendy approved. And if you don't have an approved sticker, you can get one on our website. We'll link it in our show notes. And until then, Wendy, what'd you bring? Well, I don't have it with me physically. It's big. You wanted me to hold it? Mine is big too. Oh, yeah, I guess I could have brought it. But um, I, my item is the, hold on, it has a full name. Let me, let me pull it up here. The O Cedar Easy Ring Spin Mop and Bucket System. You guys, I'm talking to you about a mop today. It's amazing. I shared a video. I think Megan may have shared it on our Instagram last week or the week before. I mopped my house with this bucket system. It's really cool. It's it's a cloth, like a microfiber cloth, right? But then you stick it in this little spin thing and you like, pump the it's not automatic you have to like pump it to like make it spin and it squeezes out all the water but guys after i did one mop through my kitchen and i poured out the water it was so dirty and so satisfying right (laughs) yeah it was great but i was like horrified because i keep a clean house and i was like oh my god my house is this dirty (laughs) but um yeah dude i bought it off of amazon it was not very much money under 30 bucks probably what a great investment if you want a clean floor love it i have a mop that you have to like twist it and it like wings no. the water out it does and then like you can twist and twist and twist and twist and twist and it's like a lot of work i need the step and the spin yes because it's like i use it on wood floors and Me it's too. Uh, you know you want a like kind of wet mop right on right, wood right. floors and this bad boy is like so dry. It does such a great job. Like, I'm stoked on it. I love it. And uh, hot tip, I follow a very popular uh, cleaning Instagram account, and they share this mop all the time. But what I want to share with you is if you are not washing your floors with hot water and Tide detergent, you are missing out because it gets the job done. Wendy said the other day that powdered Tide is the new coconut oil because people are using it for everything and i own powdered tide now and it is a great like clean my bathroom floors with it i clean the cabinets with it baseboards it's effective and you need the tiniest bit i mean tide's been around a long time why is this now a thing or are we just now finding out about it i don't know i think marketing is a powerful thing yeah i guess guys get yourself an o cedar mop and some Hot water and tide. Mm-hmm. You will thank me. Well, I don't have anything nearly as exciting as a bucket, oh, but I do on. have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I want that bucket. Um, so if you're on video, you're seeing that I have a nail polish organizer, and I've had this for a long time. But this weekend, I cleaned it out because it is double sided. I bought it on Amazon. It's plastic, and it has, I believe, 48 little sections. I could count right now, but I'm not gonna. Thank you. 
She's got all her dip powders in there. Yeah, it does have 48. So that's what I did. It was completely full. There were 48 sections that were full of nail polishes. And if you're on video, you can see it's double-sided. It has a door that opens on the front and door that opens on the back. And mm -hmm. not only did I have 48 nail polishes, but some of these were doubled up because they were minis. Well, nail polish goes bad, guys. <laughs> so I went through and I threw away all like the old, gloopy, disgusting nail polish. I put it in the hazardous waste drop off okay it's not going in the trash can i and always then, throw mine in the hazardous waste yep always yeah and i, I mean I, ma I make a trip yes to your city and drop them off <laughs> they're great and the people with the hazardous waste drop off are so nice and they'll give you mm -hmm. a battery bucket guys for easy battery recycling anyway um so i went through and i added all my dip powders in here because they were just in like a little plastic like shoebox style container and now i can see them all much better again this is much more effective on video but um most of my dip powders fit in here. I have like three little jars that didn't fit in any of these. And then I have all the dip liquids together. So it's a much easier visual for me to see what I have. And then on the back side, I do still have liquid polishes. polishes. Um, there's a couple gels in here. Um, cause I do still paint my nails or paint my toes. Like I like, I like options. It's much yeah. faster to throw polish on my nails than it is to do a dip manicure. So depending on my mood, I got it all and it's all in one place and I can see what I have and it's easy. This is my favorite way to store. Where do you polish. store that big thing at? There's a shelf in my closet and it just like oh, slides right in. So nice. It doesn't really take up any space because it's like, it's just this wide. So just right yeah. in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's better than having like a drawer full of all that crap, right? Well, and you can't see it. Like I've done everything. Mm -hmm. I've put them in a drawer. I have the little plastic like shoebox size bins that have been mm -hmm. full of them. But this way you can see them all. And then it just opens up. Where's the opening? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm scared. Up. I'm like, oh, don't open it and have them all fall out. Opens up. Ah, cool. And then you can get to it easily. Very um, cool. Yeah, and you can get it on Amazon. We'll leave a link. I'm sure you can get it other places too. But all right, guys, um, thank you so much for joining us. This episode is a little bit on the long side, but you know, that's our gift to you because we, there was no Tuesday episode. If you are a Patreon subscriber, again, this episode is on video and there's a lot of Patreon content dropping this week. So this would be an excellent time. There's a video coming. There's a bonus podcast coming all this week. So this would be a great time to subscribe. MeganandWendy.com slash Patreon. And we'll be back on Thursday discussing a movie that I cannot think of the name of. But you'll find out when you're here on Thursday. It's called Hearts Down Under. Yes, it is. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> and we'll be back with that on Thursday. Until then, have a great week, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.